back to Northwest Craftsman. I've got some very exciting news for you. Today we just got a brand new tool and it is our DeWalt 735 planner. Today we're gonna be setting it up and kind of going through how to use it and uh, just why you'd wanna have a planner on the shop. All right, let's get started. While we're unpacking this, I wanna talk about what a planner is, what I'm planning to use it for, and how a planner is different than a jointer. First up, what is a planer? Well, a planer is used for creating dimensional lumber. It's used for thicknessing your lumber. It doesn't do a good job of making wood flat or square, but it does a pretty good job at making faces parallel to each other. My plan is to speed up the preparation for my project by creating dimensional lumber more quickly with this planer. The difference between a jointer and a planer is a little bit subtle, but the devil is in the details. A jointer is intended to make a single face flat and perpendicular to another face. Generally speaking, you will run a piece of lumber on the jointer twice, once for one face and then once for an adjacent face to get your two datum faces, and then you'll run it through your planer to make the opposite faces match those, because a planer is really good at making faces parallel, but not making them flat or square. However, given its long base, it actually does a pretty decent job making flat lumber. So now that we've got it all unboxed, here's everything that comes with it. So this is a 735X, which means that it comes with in-feed and out-feed tables with an extra set of blades, but all of them, 735 or 735X, will come with your depth adjustment wheel and your dust port uh, uh, exterior or uh, out port. It has both a four inch and a two and a half inch on it that you can hook up to and all of my stuff is running off of two and a half inch. So the first thing we're gonna go do is get our depth adjustment wheel attached on there and then put our dust port extraction or our dust port on there. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna start actuating each one of the knobs and inspecting it for any damage that it might have just to make sure that everything looks right. First up, we're gonna install the depth adjustment wheel. This one is just attached with a simple fastener that goes across the shaft. On the shaft and on the wheel, there is a slot which lines up between the two. This allows it to mate all the way around. So rotate it until you find the right face, put it on there, and then screw it in to tighten it down. On the dust extraction port, there's two types of features. One is a push pin and one is a fixed pin. Line up the circle with the push pin and then rotate it around so that the fixed pin slides into the slot. When you rotate it around, the push pin will pop out. And now we're gonna get the in-feed, out-feed tables set up, and then the final step is gonna to be to level them and put some paste wax over the top of them to keep them from uh, oxidizing and to give them some good slip as the work pieces are going over the top. Check if your in-feed and out-feed tables are level. What you want to do is take a level and set it right on top. And what you're going to want to do is not necessarily look to see level right here, but you want to look at the gap right there to see how much of a gap right here. Now this side is actually pretty good, good enough that I'm going to leave it, but when I look at the other side is that there is a gap, a much larger gap right in here. So what I'm gonna do is go to both sides uh, and loosen these screws, keep this one probably pretty tight, loosen this guy up, and then I'm gonna bring this edge of the table up just a little bit until I am level with the level, or flush with the level. So there's what it looks like once it's finally been uh, made flush all the way across. One of the tricks that I have seen online is rather than using a regular old aluminum level like this, is to use a magnetic level because it will stick to this base and stick to this base. So if you loosen the screws up all the way across, it's automatically flush because it just pulls everything up to the magnet. So if you have one of those on hand, it's gonna be really handy. If you happen not to have a level, try and get one with a magnetic base because it's gonna make your life a lot easier. But all in all, that wasn't really all that difficult. Alrighty, so the last step that we're gonna do is go ahead and pop the top off of this so that you guys can see what the inside of it looks like and so that I can see what the inside of it looks like. And we're gonna go, ta go take a look at the blade assembly before testing it.
Once you remove that cosmetic cover, you can see a couple of the different components right here. Here is the evacuated or the uh, assisted dust extraction or uh, debris extraction. And then this guy right here is the cover for the blade assembly itself. And they give you these nice little thumb screws right here so that you can take it off. So a couple different things to note when you're looking in here. One, you've got the blade assembly and then the evacuated assist, which we pointed out earlier. Uh, then you also have the chains you can see in a couple of different locations to attach to the worm drives or screw drives all the way around here to get this to come up at a consistent level. The chains are nice because it keeps everything running without a lot of slop and so you're not going to get a lot of wobble between everything. Keeps everything pretty stable. Uh, on the... Uh, uh, vacuum or the uh, cover for the dust port itself. Uh, one of the things that I noticed is that they've got a very narrow slot that it's pulling out of. So if we're ever running into clogs, this is probably one of the first places that I'm going to be looking because it's a pretty narrow opening. And if we're taking big, long, wide chips, uh, we may need some help doing that. But right here, you can see it's one of the twist lock type fittings as well. So it should just sit in there nice and snugly without coming out. Uh, and I think we're just about ready to get this guy set it back up and give her a test. through here I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and get a dry run done where we just turn it on uh, test the shifter while it's at speed because that's the only time that you're supposed to use the shifter and then uh, just make sure that things are looking the way that they're supposed to uh, one of the things to keep in mind when you're using power tools like this always wear eye protection and hearing protection because your ears will never come back and your eyes will never come back either Alrighty, so then with that successful test, I'm going to go ahead and hook up a uh, 90 degree to the dust out port right here so that we can uh, keep anything from hanging over the top of where our work pieces are going to come out. And we get the rest of the uh, dust collector system hooked up and we'll start running some lumber through it. that we're going to run is to make sure that the pressure that the uh, assisted evacuation is going to put through this doesn't pop any of my hoses off because this flexible hose is just put on through a uh, friction fit here and here. The rest of those guys are clamped on so they're not going to come off but I want to make sure that this guy right here isn't going to. So the first test that we're going to do is putting a 2x4 through there and I'm only going to be taking off the smallest amount possible and the way that I'm doing that is with the uh, removal gauge that they have right here. And they've got a small flipper on the inside and so if while it's off you stick your piece of wood through and stick it right up to your roller you can see that I'll be taking a 32nd of an inch off. And so on this particular piece of wood right here um, it looks like the grain is coming up and out here. So we'll see what it looks like when it comes out the other side, but this is the uh, rough texture that we have at the beginning. Let's turn that on autofocus real fast. So you guys can see what that looks like. So this is about what that surface looks like. All of that jazz. And then we're gonna see what it looks like when we send it through the planer. <laughs> All right, so pass number one, and yeah, that makes a big difference, and it looks really, really nice all the way through there, and this is just the rough cut finish. Uh, so I'm gonna go through and put it down one more time, uh, put it through there one more time, and see if we can't get this whole face to look nice. Here's what it looks like in the end. Uh, frankly, this looks really, really nice. 
you can totally see uh, areas, let me see if I can't find a good example, areas like this where you had a little bit of tear out depending on which way the grain was and which way you fed it in. So I'm gonna need to spend some time getting that working. Um, I don't really see that much snipe. Um, if you're new to woodworking, snipe is where you leave one roller and go to the next, and you would see a line kind of coming through right here, and I'm not really seeing much. We'll check the other side real fast. Oh, and there's a teeny tiny bit of snipe on this side that I can see. You can see it just a little bit right there. Um, but given the amount of tear out that I have, I think the tear out's gonna be a bigger deal. All right, so let's go ahead and test a four by four through it. And I think that's just about it. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I hope that you learned something about setting up your uh, DeWalt 735 or if you've got another hand planer or sorry, another planer. It's not a hand planer. If you have another planer, I hope that you learned a little bit about why they're useful around the shop and uh, why they're beneficial. I mean, honestly, when I'm looking at how fast I was able to blow through this 4x4 and get all the bull nose off of it, even though there's still a little bit of snipe and other things that I'm gonna need to uh, practice and work through and figure out how to avoid, um, honestly, the efficiencies are incredible for me. Like I'm looking at this and it's just gonna save me a ton of time as I'm prepping uh, my raw lumber for any of my projects. So thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. If you wanna see any of our other videos, go ahead and check out the channel. If you like the kind of content that we're producing, go ahead and subscribe. I've got a lot of really exciting stuff coming up. It looks like I'm gonna be moving into a new shop instead of just sharing a garage. Um, and we're going to be posting about building that shop and kind of building it out, looking at what's going on. Um, and then just a ton of different projects. So if you guys want to see all of those, go ahead and hit subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when new episodes are released. And uh, also find us on Facebook and Instagram. And thank you guys very much for joining. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Have a great one, you guys. Uh, this should be released on Saturday morning like it normally, well, like the episodes normally are. So I hope that you guys have an excellent weekend. I know that here in the Pacific Northwest, we're about to be hitting snowmageddon. Apparently it's supposed to be snowing solid for like the next five days. So we'll see what actually materializes of it and uh, see if we can't get any projects done if work gets canceled. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great one. I'll talk to you later. Bye.